In summer of 2012, I was teaching an introduction to communication course, two sections, and it's summer quarters, so there's only three week, or eight weeks. In week three, I could tell from looking at things in Canvas that grades were diving, students were struggling, I usually have a high success rate, I'm like, what's going on? So I'm a communication teacher, so we need to talk this out. What's going on? I had three students in the class that had the book, and the rest of the class was saying there was no way they could go get the book. The book was about $130 and then Washington tax. What are we gonna do? In the traditional model, when it's time to look at your textbook, you would maybe have a departmental adoption discussion. As an adjunct at TCC at the time, I didn't have permission to officially veer away from the book. Our department hadn't had the OER meeting yet. But I had to. It wasn't about putting a different book in the bookstore. It was by helping the students survive the quarter. So for me, it was an emergency. It wasn't really a thought out process at the beginning. I came to Quill and said, help. <laughs> and it went so fantastic. It was the best quarter I'd had. The students were more engaged. They were using more critical thinking. They were more excited about what we were doing in class. So at the end of the quarter, that's when I went straight to the department and said, please let me keep doing this. I don't want them to buy that $130 book anymore. So we'll do a quick definition of the R's. These are materials that you can legally reuse, remix, retain, that's a new R we've added, redistribute and revise. And again, this is something I was surprised the students picked up on so quickly in talking about how if they have a friend who has a presentation or a job interview coming up, they can legally send the videos and readings that we've been talking about in class to help them out. It's been fun to hear them talk about being in the minivan, going to the soccer game, and they've got the TED Talk playing, and the whole family can learn from that at the same time. And sometimes they will do that illegally, but this way they can actually do it legally. I think it's really important. We talk a lot with the students about plagiarism, but I think we should talk more with them about copyright to prepare them for future in life. So when they're applying for a job and have a portfolio, they don't not get the job because the employer realizes that they have a lot of copyright infringement going on. They want that person to be ready for the world. So teaching public speaking, I always ask the students, <laughs> they are coming into the class because it's required, not because they're really excited to get up in front of a group of people and talk more. So on day one, I look like the villain. <laughs> That's gonna make them sit and write speeches. But when I talk with them about the movement, I've recently learned that there were teachers providing OER materials, but not explaining to the students about the movement. Instead, they were just saying, guess what, you're not gonna to have to pay for these sources. I think it's really important to tell them about what the OER movement is for several reasons. It gets them motivated. They see, we are in this system where we have eight week and 10 week classes. We don't have a lot of time for them to warm up to us and motivation. Learning requires motivation. So I tell them why I'm doing it. I talk with them about the time that I've invested so that they know I'm committed to their success. I have them journal on day one. What does it mean to you in your life that you're not having to spend $100 or $130 depending on the class on that textbook? I tell them they can not that they can do it anonymously. They don't have to put their name because I want them to be able to speak freely without being embarrassed. But if they want to join the movement and have their voice be used on the Liberated blog, going and speaking with us, what a great way to enhance their public speaking skills. The comments that they write also fuel me. Uh, Quill accused me of being a little Pollyanna about why <laughs> it is some work involved. But I feel like, I feel like we had a, a stipend system. So TCC set up a system, there was a small stipend if you would convert your classes to OER. But I started not knowing about the stipend and definitely it didn't take more stipends for me to move other classes. The students being more engaged and motivated and excited about being in class was a payment to me. 
I wasn't having to drag them through the quarter. They were excited. That compassion leads them to be motivated. I see a big difference in the looks on their faces from when they walk into public speaking on day one and when they walk out at the end of the class. They see that I care and I'm going to help lead them through this and I need that I need their voices. Our administration cares more about how they feel about the movement than how I feel about the movement. We need them to use their voice to say hey we want more OER classes and let's talk about how we can make this part of our institution. So, anyone see the Avengers movie? Do you and do you watch Agents of Shield? Uh, no, we. So there's a. I've only seen a couple episodes, but now they have a television show, yep. and the new movie came out, and they decided to do some crossover. So at the end of the latest movie, everything's a wreck. They wreck the town, and everything's messy and they make Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. come in and clean up. You really don't want to be that person who has to come in and clean up, but when the superheroes are all celebrating and inviting Batman to tell them about the story, are you really gonna look at them and say, I don't want to go clean up your mess after you save the day? And I think this has translated over into the students. They see they're gonna to have to dig in and do a lot of work in the quarter, but they see how much work I've already done, and I think it helps that motivation of them saying, and I asked them this quarter, uh, point blank, I said, does this make sense in my presentation? They're like, yeah, I get it. So, we are saving them money, but there's more. <laughs> I think it really helps with the critical thinking because I invite them, if they don't like the reading, to let me know. And especially outside public speaking and the other classes where we have a variety of learning objectives, some of the readings, I disagree with. I put in the two readings and want to see where they are. I want them to find an article if they don't like the one we're using, even all the way to the assignment, which will help you with your workload, and we'll talk about that in a minute. Again, the multiple voices. They like hearing from multiple sources instead of just one perspective, and they talk a lot in their student evaluations about the OER resources being more current and more up to date. In the traditional publishing model, uh, I've worked for McGraw-Hill and the book is usually a year to two years old by the time it actually gets in their hands. If they want to talk about Star Wars and The Walking Dead, we can work that in, change the PDF, repost it, staying legal. <laughs> so here's what's talking about the assignments and what David uh, Wiley calls open pedagogy in the OER movement. We're familiar with having that course pack or those resources that are all put together, but I like to break down and talk a lot more about the learning objectives and invite the students, especially outside public speaking, but in public speaking they get to design their final also. I invite them, so for the, for the assignments leading up to the final, if they don't like an assignment and they're in front of the deadline, so you can't contact me after the deadline and say I didn't do that assignment because I didn't like it. But before the deadline, if you will let me know, hey, I want to do this. So for example, in the introduction to communication, interpersonal communication, they have to study nonverbal. I had a student last quarter, instead of writing a paper about nonverbal communication, went to a dance studio and did a film on how dancers communicate nonverbally. And I said, that sounds fantastic, and it turned out great. And I've already got one email this quarter of a student that wanted to do a video project, and I highly encourage that being someone that also teaches film. And she said, you said I could ask you to do this, and I'm a week before the deadline, and I said, yes, you can. Getting them involved gives you great assignment ideas. Teaching them about Creative Commons licensing gives you great examples for the future without having to keep a hold of all those emails of can I use your project as an example. If they put a Creative Commons license on it, then you know legally. So now you start to build this model where you have examples for students and it lightens up the workload some when they help design assignments. David Wiley was talking about this at the Open Ed Conference and it was so cool. He was talking about a project management graduate course where the students wrote the book as their class to reach learning objectives. I'm like, wow, that sounds so fun, but you know, he's getting to teach eight students in a master's class, and I'm teaching 100 and 200 global classes. 
But then I thought about it more and had some more coffee and thought, why not? Why can't we have fun? It doesn't have to be all quizzes and short answer tests. Let them design projects, go out in the community, do service learning projects, and they're more engaged and they're more motivated. So now we're transitioning into how. <laughs> you need a contact person. I also teach at a university that they have a different funding model where they wrote the public speaking book. It's $30 for the students and that funds their professional development. So there's no way that they're gonna allow me to go OER for those classes. They depend on that resource. But they do also have in the library, a librarian who is the OER lead. So I each school investigate who is your go-to person. For me, it's Quill. She is my Batman. I feel like I'm the Robin. She's leading the way. I have become trained by her that I feel more capable than when I started. And we have great handouts and resources to help you get started. But she also spends more time in these databases. So if I'm needing something about a lesson I'm gonna do on Bangladesh, I spend, I don't know, 15 minutes and I say, hey, have you seen anything? And she's like, yeah, check out this new thing they're doing in Merlot. So I feel like she's leading me on this journey. <laughs> she has intellect coupled with compassion, which is description for Batman. So she's my Batman. And the liberated blog at TC Tacoma CC EDU slash open, you can follow updates on what we're doing. It's all about student voice. The students sharing their stories. Going OER is not about reinventing the wheel. You can, but the beauty of it, when you look at a traditional textbook, you're decide if you don't like it, it's like, okay, we'll put that away and we'll look at this one because I don't like that one. Depending on the licensing, which we'll talk about and there's a handout for you to ingest more later. Depending on the licensing, you can just delete the parts you don't like and change it. Or when you look at the courses, pick the pieces that fit your learning objectives. So for instance, in Washington's open course library, that's how I first started with the great work by Phil Vendetti. Big Phil Vendetti fan. When I very first looked at it, I hadn't met Quill yet. So I wasn't really, I didn't have a good training on what OER is. So I looked at it and said, that doesn't match my learning objectives and put it away. Because our schools, even though it's an ampersand course, we have very different learning objectives for the class. Now I understand I can take the pieces that work for my learning objectives and then just fill in the holes with Quill support. So the Kaleidoscope courses are a really great starting point to look at those classes and say what fits. And because it's a interdisciplinary group of scholars from around the country, they're actually really large databases. Like in the public speaking class at TCC, I think we have six learning objectives. In the Kaleidoscope course, I think there's 40 because we're trying to match around the country, not expecting a school to go through all 40 modules, trying to have what they need to match their learning objectives. So this is the public speaking team. So you see we have Richard Madoff is in New York, Petra at Wiley College, that's in Texas, Brent, the Central Community College is in Nebraska. So we're kind of going across the country, they bring their learning objectives, and we make sure the course we put together matches all of them. So we wind up having a big course. So these are people to go to resources to help you. The Creative Commons website is an amazing tool to know about the licensing. There's different licenses and you have to know, like in the public speaking project, they have a no derivative license, so I can't make changes to it. And as I find materials that match the quality, I will not use them. I know as scholars, we get, I began saying, what if somebody takes my video on muted group theory and starts making changes to where they mess it up? And then it goes forward <laughs> and my name's attached to it. But if you're doing the attributions properly, they link back to the original and you can see as a scholar what the original looks like. So I would encourage you to not be afraid to share because the more we share, the easier it will be for future people. When I started looking for OER, I was going to training saying there's nothing for communication. Then I met Quill at a training at Olympic College, 
more stuff had been added on and Quill said, guess what? You teach at TCC too. I'm an adjunct flying around. She's like, I can help you. I know where some stuff is. Every quarter I see more and more in the communication world. So if you look and you don't find something in your field, please don't just turn away. I would encourage you to look again the next quarter. As more people share, the more these resources build. So it's about thinking outside of the box and being that one spark that's willing to dive in. So there's multiple ways of going OER. And Quill, I'm gonna turn it over to her in a minute for the how. You could just try one lesson. You can try a kaleidoscope course. And after you get more comfortable, you can dive in and build the resources out that'll match exactly what you're needing, especially as you start getting students motivated to, to help out. So please don't be afraid of your stuff not being perfect before you share it. Perfect is not what you wanna strive for. You wanna strive for saving the day because we're never gonna feel like it's perfect. Um, and the more we share, the more we're gonna help the students.